Hello, void dwellers. Throughout my life, I was always very drawn to physics. The thing that threw me off it was the math. I never was very good with numbers. I always needed to work twice as hard as uh, others to grasp math, but I was always able to understand logic and structures. I guess that's why I'm pretty good at programming and I was attracted to philosophy. These are fields that require logical thinking, but not necessarily high abilities in math. But because of my math deficiency, I used to be embarrassed to ask questions or suggest ideas because I kept thinking that I probably don't understand everything. After all, they have these mathematic answers to everything and they go over my head. So all of those physicists must know something that I don't. And so I kept my ideas to myself. I read books, I watched educational videos on TV and online, but I assumed that whatever ideas I might have are probably stupid and I'd be left at if I ever expressed them. But now I have an amazing tool at my disposal, AI. You know, I've made a few videos about AI already on this channel, and I hate the stupid hype and the panic trolls out there. It's a terrific piece of technology that can be used for idiotic things, disgusting things, bad things, or it can be a very helpful and beneficial tool for you. As usual, the choice is ours. And to me, it was like finally having someone I can talk to without feeling self-conscious about my lack of professional knowledge. I could ask the same question a million times and it won't lose patience with me. I could challenge and ask for resources and it would give it to me. And by the way, I strongly recommend that if you use AI for anything, do challenge it. Ask a few services, not just JetGPT. Go to Claude, Gemini, Copilot, DeepThink. Go to other models and ask them the same question. And always ask for citation on everything, by the way. Also, it's good to ask for resources for you to read more on the subject later. So yeah, don't blindly believe anything AI tells you. Don't forget, it's just echoing the things that it picked up from us online. But if you do ask the, the right questions and you double check and you ask for resources, you will have a terrific tool at your disposal. A virtual teacher that can get you understanding finally the things that you always wanted to know. And to my surprise, annoyance and delight, when I told AI some of my thoughts about different things in physics, I discovered that not only was I not talking for my ass, I was apparently echoing things that leading physicists have been saying. For example, why do large systems seem to behave in a classical way, but quantum particles don't? The quantum world is a world of probability, which is why quantum particles sometimes behave in an unpredictable way. For example, electrons always have a probability to their location, and sometimes they blink into existence in a place that seems very unlikely for them to be. Because in any system of probability, the unlikely is still not a zero. It might happen. And over time, it becomes more and more probable to happen. And that's the kind of problem we came across in creating CPUs. In very simplistic terms and in short, binary in our computers, those ones and zeros, they represent the presence or the absence of an electron in a circuit. One, the electron is there. Zero, the electron is not there. So inside the CPU, there are these barriers that would keep the electron out when we need zero to be, re to be represented. But as we made things smaller and smaller, electrons began appearing beyond the barrier. They didn't go through it. They just kind of popped into existence on the other side of the barrier. Just because a quantum particle has a chance of being in different places. So we needed to make the barrier higher to bring the probability down to a maintainable level. So in short, quantum particles are weird and they can behave in a weird way. But why don't we see it in big objects that are made of those particles? Why doesn't a chair just pops into existence in another room. Now, my personal thinking from back when I was in my early 20s was that the probability of something like that happening is so low that it is effectively zero because an average chair is made up of six octillions particles. I actually asked JetGPT to do the math for me. Six octillion, by the way, that is the number six with 27 zeros after it. So in order for the chair to do something quantumly weird, all six octillion particles would have to hit the most improbable behavior at the same exact time. 
it would take an octillion of universes lifetimes to get to a point where there's even a remote possibility of that ever happening. And that's what I always thought, but I've never articulated it or asked a physicist about it because I've never heard it discussed in any of the books I've read or the shows I've watched. So I can imagine that there must be some kind of an explanation that I'm not aware of. And I was embarrassed. Turns out, this is the explanation. It's called decoherence, and there are physicists who wrote exactly about that. Well, encouraged by this discovery, I continued exploring other ideas I had and was too scared to talk about. Like, for example, the problem between general relativity and quantum physics, which really comes down to the problem of gravity. In general relativity, gravity is caused by the way that anything with mass or energy causes a curve in space-time. So we, are, we all feel like we are falling towards the Earth because the mass of our, of our planet creates a three-dimensional ball-like curve in space-time, and our bodies just follow the curve. So in general relativity, space-time is dynamic and curved. But quantum physics assumes that space-time is flat and unchanging. In fact, when gravitational forces start to influence quantum particles, the entire theory breaks down, like in black holes, and we'll get to that because that's the, my main question here. But quantum physics is one of the best theory we've ever come up with. It has a 100% prediction success rating. And I mean to say every single prediction it made since it was conceived in 1920 is right. Not like almost 100%, not like 99.9, .9. no, all of it. It hasn't been wrong one single time. So we know that it works. But also general relativity has that same record. And as technology progressed, we were able to prove more and more of Einstein's predictions. So we have two absolutely infallible theories, but one doesn't work with the other. Only, to my opinion, they do. And they always have. Because according to general relativity, it takes an enormous amount of energy or mass to make a significant curve in space-time. So from a perspective of a quantum particle, space-time for all intents and purposes is completely flat and static. So there's no problem. Turns out I lack a originality in that line of thought as well. And it's exactly what some physicists have been saying. I guess it's just not sexy enough to put in pop science book or TV shows about physics, because I never heard of it. But I asked ChatGPT to give me a list of scientists that talk about this and decoherence, and it supplied it. And now I feel pretty confident about other ideas I always had. For example, that superposition is purely theoretical and could never exist in real life. For those who don't know, superposition is a theoretical quantum state where the system has several possible outcomes and it supposedly exists in all of those possibilities at the same time until it, it is measured or observed. And then the superposition collapses into one of those possibilities. Schrodinger's cat, by the way, was actually a way of making fun of the idea, of showing a ridiculous paradox that it leads to. But I always thought it can never exist because... I always took measured or observed as interacting with something. And that makes sense. The moment you are interacting with something, both of you have to have a very specific singular state because otherwise you'd have something that is the effect of several possible causes and that makes no sense. So the moment something interacts with anything else, it cannot be in a superposition. And everything is interacting with something all the time. Even a single particle in the far edge of the universe, surrounded by absolutely nothing but a vacuum, is still interacting with something. Why? General relativity. We are all in space-time, and every energy or mass causes it to curve. Even if the curve is so subtle that it basically has no influence on anything. But the curve is there. And if a particle is curved in space-time, it isn't in a superposition. So nothing can be in a superposition in the real world ever. JGPT thought that line of thought uh, also follows the opinion of several physicists, but I'd be delighted to hear challenges to that if anyone has them. But now let's get to my actual question, and it's a question that even JGPT failed to answer. And it has to do with quantum physics and Hawking's radiation. To put it shortly, 
Hawking's radiation is the radiation on the event horizon of a black hole. Basically, black holes don't just go on forever, but they radiate the energy trapped in them in this Hawking radiation until finally, in, you know, gajillion, bajillion years, they fade away and disappear. The problem quantum physicists have is that information is lost in a black hole. Not energy, not mass, but information. See, it's all about this thing that they call unitarity. The idea is that everything can be reversed because information is always preserved. For example, if you burn a book, in theory, you could take the particles that have scattered in the smoke and ashes and reassemble them to create the same exact book, coffee stains and everything. The information of the book is still there. It's not about the practicality of being able to do that, it's about theory. If we had the, the technology to track the particles, in theory, we could bring the book back. But if you throw the book into a black hole, the book is gone forever. There's no way to know what happens to the particles within the black hole. It's a black box. And it's not because you don't have the technology. God himself can't see inside the black hole. The information is just gone. And then particles are spewed out as thermic energy without any past. So energy is preserved, but the information is lost. And physicists say that means the entirety of quantum physics fails because of it. And I said, what? Why would you say that? And that's pretty much the place where I couldn't find a proper explanation to it. Because from my perspective, the fact that information is lost in the most extreme cases, like a black hole, has absolutely no influence on the theory in non-extreme circumstances. But physicists seem to have decided on an axiom that states that the laws of quantum mechanics must be applied identically and universally at all scales and all energy levels without exception. Why? The conditions are exceptional. Why without exception? Why are we following this assumption? Why can't we just say, yes, in extreme cases, the information is lost and that is part of quantum physics? Yeah, I know the scientists have had this boner for one theory to rule them all for eternity now, and I always kind of didn't understand why that is a necessity. But is that the only reason? Because I couldn't find a single reason for why this axiom must be maintained or else everything stops working. At one point, JetGPT said to me, if quantum physics isn't universally unitary, quantum computing is impossible. So I asked it why, and it said, because quantum gates are unitary. And when I pressed and said, well, if unitarity breaks in extreme conditions like a black hole, that has nothing to do with it in normal conditions, the AI actually said to me, you are 100% correct. There's no evidence, theoretical or experimental, that information loss in extreme space-time curvature causes unitarity to fail in low energy, flat space-time, or that it invalidates anything about the quantum behavior of electrons in a superconducting circuit or trapped ion systems. So AI basically told me, I don't know. So <laughs> that's where I'm stuck. That's my question to physicists out there. And please feel free to share this video because I really am asking and I really, really would love to know. Did we just decide randomly that unitarity has to be universal in all energy levels and there's absolutely no reason for that assumption? Or am I and, and my AI friend over there are missing some fundamental piece of this puzzle? That's my question. Please do let me know if you have the answer.